Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Andres Toloza, an animal nutrition scientist at Inside Tracker, which is a partner company of DSM. So Andres, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Hi, Clayton. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, my background is interesting. I did my bachelor's in Colombia, and I work in the industry for a little bit here and in and, and Colombia for a couple of years. I came to the USA. I got a master's with uh, Dr. Ellis and the matchups in the UFI, and then I was interested in swine nutrition. Therefore, I decided to pursue a um, degree with K-State Swine Nutrition Team, where I obtained a second master's degree on applied swine nutrition. I now work in uh, Inside Tracker, which is, as you said, an part a strategic partner of DSM working in Verax, which is a precision farming tool using blood biomarkers to evaluate health and performance in pigs and poultry. Securing the future of your valuable sow herd begins with your gilts. Gilt preparation is the foundation of the sow herd as well as its progeny, leading to more sustainable swine production. For nearly four decades, our tailored services and multifaceted solutions have ensured lifetime performance from the beginning. DSM offers guilt protection you can trust. Learn more at dsm.com forward slash sow longevity. Gotcha. So I know you're graduated now, but I actually saw a study that you did while you were at Kansas State. Um, and I read that study. So I was going to ask you about that study you did about increasing threening levels in diets with higher dried distillers grains. Uh, would you mind telling us about that study? Absolutely. So uh, this is study that I'm going to talk about focus in the evaluation of the impact of increasing levels of training to lysine ratio in course of meal diets with and without DDGs. Uh, is, this was on in growth finished peaks. For the background of this study, um, threonine is basically categorized as the first limiting amino acid for maintenance. This suggests that the utilization of threonine for protein deposition is a little bit less than all compared to other amino acids. Uh, previous research has highlighted that the threonine incorporation in the mucosa uh, protein and the pancreas and in the mucin will be very important uh, and is high compared to other amino acids. Uh, therefore, an increase in this mucin production might need to the increase in threonine levels for growth finished pigs when feeding a high uh, fiber diet. DDGS, uh, which is dry, uh, the stillest dry grains with solubles, is a common sub product using swine nutrition and swine production in the USA. This has high concentration of insoluble fiber, which results in increasing endogenous losses of these enzymes, enterocytes, and mucins in the GI tract. Therefore, High inclusion of PDGs might uh, potentially influence the mucin secretion, and uh, studies have suggest that in order to maximize the growth performance, uh, the level of this amino acid threonine might need to be increased in diets containing a uh, high uh, fiber source. Uh, these studies were used uh, were were using uh, soy holes, so it was unclear if we could see the same response feeding. Uh, diets with DDGs. Uh, going real quick as for the treatments, this was a two by two factorial with uh, one factor being DDGs in the diet and uh, the other factor being normal levels of threonine or high levels of threonine. Uh, as I said, the diets were either 0% DDGs or feeding four phases, 40% DDGs in phase one and two of the growth finish and then reducing to 30% in phase three and reducing to 15% in the last phase of phase four of the finishing period. And the three only levels were either normal, which is 61, 62, 63, and 65% of the training to lysine ratio or high three which was fed at 67, 68, 69, and 72% on a ratio to lysine on the dyes that have high three only. Um, the phases were formed, um, were comprehended in 28 days, and the experiment started at uh, 35 kilograms of body weight and reaching a final weight of 135 or 136 kilograms. So going uh, over the results real quick, um, 
I want to mention that there was no interaction between the two factors, being the uh, level of threonine to lysine ratio and the DDGs in the diet for any of the response criteria evaluated. And when we look at the threonine response, we saw that there was no evidence of difference for average daily gain, average daily feed intake, feed efficiency, or body weight when comparing the pigs that were fed normal levels of threonine or high levels of threonine to lysine ratio throughout the study, regardless of the uh, DDGs fed in the diet. When we look at the results for the DDGs uh, factor, we decided to look at the, at the uh, results in two phases, which was the growing period, which was from 0 to 50, 56 days, and the finisher period, which was from 56 days to, 80, uh, to 112 days of the experiment. Um, when we look at these results in the growing period, which was 0 to 56 days of the study, where we fed 40% DDGs, we saw that the pigs that were fed diets with no DDGs had increased average daily gain, increased um, body weight at the end of this growing period, and had improved feed efficiency compared to the pigs that had high levels of DDGs in the diet being 40%. Then when we look at the results for the finisher period, which was, which was from 60, uh, 56 days to 112 days, um, we saw that the pigs fed uh, DDGs in the diet, increasing average daily gain compared to the pigs that had uh, no DDGs in the diet. When we look at the pigs that were fed without DDGs, these ones uh, had an increased average daily feed intake and improved feed efficiency. However, um, the increase in average daily feed intake when we reduce this uh, amount of DDGs in the diet from 30 to 50 percent offset and increase average daily gain only in this part of the experiment. We look at the um, these results and we can uh, think that this can be explained by the fact that the DDGs level in the diet in the finisher period was reduced from 40 percent at the beginning to 30 percent to 15 percent in the very last phase. This was uh, a strategy used and is you know, common, commonly used in the industry to try to avoid carcass issue, specifically iodine value and kind of a semi withdrawal strategy of this ingredient in the diet, which is very commonly uh, used in the industry. So we speculate that this bulkiness of uh, having 40 percent DDGs in the diet might have limited uh, the feed intake being uh, this effect of good feel uh, in the early portions of the study. And then when we started to decrease this level of DDGs in the diet to 30 and to 15%, the pigs were able to consume a little bit more feed, which was uh, then uh, resulted in a consequence of having increased average daily gain in the late finishing. However, when we look at the results overall, from day zero to 112, which was, which was from 35 kilograms to 135, 136 kilograms. Overall, the pigs that had no DDGs in the diet had increased average daily gain and final body weight with reduced average feed intake. As a consequence, the feed efficiency was improved in these pigs compared to the pigs that had uh, DDGs in the diet during the experiment. This, again, to clarify, was regardless of the level of threonine that was fed in the diet for pigs with no DDGs or DDGs. So we think that this study um, corroborates that the inclusion of um, high levels of uh, fiber of, for example, 40% uh, of a corn cob product being DDGs, which is used in growth finished diets at the expense of corn and soybean meal, uh, can negatively impact the growth, the growth performance. Then uh, we look at the at the diets with, with the pigs that were fed diets with DDGs uh, in the growth finish period, and um, they decrease gain and feed efficiency. And as a result, at the end of the experiment, we saw uh, about a three kilogram decrease in body weight uh, on the pigs that were fed DDGs in the diet uh, throughout the experiment compared to the pigs that had no DDGs. Um, 
So we think that we can conclude that um, feeding diets with high levels of insoluble fiber, such as DDGs, can decrease growth performance. Um, in this study, increasing the digestible threonine to lysine ratio concentration in a diet containing uh, DDGs did not result in an improving growth performance. And I want to clarify one thing here before we we wrap up these conclusions, uh, Clayton, and is that um, we hypothesize that this could be because of the source of fiber that is fed in the studies. Um, one study that we evaluated here was a uh, feeding soybean uh, hulls, which, we, which is a source of insoluble and soluble fiber. Insoluble fiber is, is mainly uh, cellulose and hemicellulose, whereas soluble fiber includes, pe includes uh, pectins, gums, and uh, beta glucans. Uh, so studies that have shown um, in feeding only cellulose or only pectin in pigs, such as a study by Sue and others in 2005, so that when the pectin is added to the diet at increasing amounts, um, the threonine utilization by the pig indeed increases, whereas you, when you add only so cellulose to the diet, there is not really a response in the increasing levels of utilization of uh, threonine. So just to be uh, clear here, that we think that there is more uh, research warranted and uh, maybe more, more being more specific in the type of fiber that is fed, fed to the pigs might be a, a, a reason for a response in threonine or, or not in raw finished pigs. Gotcha. So one question I had is you said that the increased dis dried distiller's grains actually increases the mucin production um, in the intestinal lumen. So is that just due to due to the increase since there is increased villus length, thus there's more goblet cells or what exactly causes that increased mucin production? Um, excellent question, Playon. And, and one of the things that the insoluble fibers source uh, have in the GA tract is that they, they normally wash off the lignin around the GI tract. These increase the production of mucin and globlet, globlet, globlet cells, excuse me, which contain high amounts of threonine. So I think that that's one of the reasons uh, why we thought that increasing threonine might be beneficial and improve growth performance when feeding fiber uh, sources to pigs. Uh, so that could be definitely a uh, an explanation for, for this amino acid in the diet. So you mentioned it a little already um, and how it depends on the fiber source. But the other question I had is, do you think increasing that distiller's grains inclusion later in the finishing, so above 15%, which I know that can have some effects on carcass quality, but do you think increasing that would then drive a more higher or more necessary need for threonine? Or do you think due to the fi fiber source, it really wouldn't have much of an effect? That, that's a great question, and we ask ourselves that at the end of the study, but due to the results in the growth finish, uh, in, only in the growing period, which was at the period of rapid growth of the peak, having 40% of the um, uh, DDGs in the diet did not uh, impact or did not have an impact when increasing the threonine in the diet, we don't think that that really will mal matter at the end of the growing period where they kind of plateau in the growth. And indeed, we think that is a more there is need uh, a need for more specific fiber source that might offset that need of threonine in the diet. So as I said, insoluble fiber, a lot of uh, cellulose and hemicellulose might not offset that need for the increase of this amino acid as a requirement. But maybe soluble fiber source, uh, uh, more specifically might offset uh, the need of this amino acid being added to the diet in increasing amounts to try to compensate for those losses of uh, mucin and goblet cells. Well, I believe that's all we have time for. So thanks again for coming on the show to share that with us. Awesome. Thank you a lot for having me and, and wish you the best. 
Yep, and everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Mm-hmm.